this bang, bang on this door. And I just shot up. My heart just hit my ribs. And I opened the door, and there's Jack Lamb. And I just looked at him, and all he said was, we've had the big one. There was this surreal scene. The mountains all glowed pink. It was just gorgeous. And here is flat calm, blue water, and in the midst of it is this blood red tanker with this black inky stain all around it. The oil industry was completely unprepared to respond to the spill, no matter what cleanup method they wished to use, whether it was dispersants or, or mechanical, they were completely unprepared. It was nine hours, 10 hours after the grounding. There was nothing. There was not even a handkerchief in the water. It took the oil out through Prince William Sound, past Prince William Sound, out into the Gulf of Alaska, and to points as far distant as 1,200 miles from the point of impact. Almost half of the oil that spilled stayed in Prince William Sound. It got buried, it got hung up in the trees, in the rocks, on the beaches. There was oil that was three feet thick, a meter thick, rolling into some of these bays. Turns out, Exxon didn't know how to clean up the oil when it was on the water. Exxon didn't really have a plan for cleaning up the oil when it was on the beaches either. Exxon cleaned up maybe 3% of it. So most of the oil stayed on the beaches. So oiled residue of the Exxon Valdez 18 years later. The first indication of long-term harm in this community was 1991. The fish all came flooding in within two weeks, and they were very poor quality fish. 1992 comes along. Suddenly, there's no capacity because there's no fish. The pink salmon just didn't appear. They never appeared. 1993 rolls around. It was like one, two shocks in this community. The first punch came in April when the herring fishery completely collapsed. out in front of the Supreme Court building in order to be in line to get seats so we can hear the trial today, the Supreme Court trial. What $2.5 billion is going to do is to help deter the next oil spill and the one after that and the one after that. It's also going to help bring a little bit of closure to our lives and it's also going to help us compensate for long-term damages which this trial never did. It's only compensated us for short-term damages. There's a need for people to understand what happened in this town. We need to wake up 
and take back control from these corporations. We need to say our values count, human rights count, human decency counts, our little communities, our lives count more than corporate values. <laughs> 